Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to Mad Medicine. In this video, we're going to be discussing an overview of the mood disorders. Now, if you guys don't already know, on our YouTube channel, we have a playlist for the USMLE Psych uh, Step 1 Psychiatry video. So go ahead and check that out. We're constantly updating our playlist. And when you do, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. And with that being said, let's discuss mood disorders. So mood disorders are a set of physiologic disorders. And yes, I said that right. They are a set of physiologic disorders. I know a lot of you are probably thinking they're only emotional. No, they're a set of physiologic disorders where the emotional state is distorted or inconsistent. Now this is important, especially the physiologic part, because we know from many uh, examples in psychiatry and throughout medicine that your emotions are very closely tied to your physical health. And one example of that is uh, something called Takatsubu cardiomyopathy. If you guys don't know what that is, definitely go search it. But it's a type of cardiomyopathy that occurs in otherwise healthy individuals. And in this cardiomyopathy, it's usually uh, precipitated by a sort of emotional distress or emotional uh, a stressful situation like a loss of a loved one or divorce. A lot of times people with this type of cardiomyopathy get it because uh, they, they lost someone they love and they can't cope with it and it ends up leading to heart disease. So obviously that is a prime example where your emotions are intertwined with your physical health and that's why mood disorders also are a disorder where your emotions and your physical health go hand in hand together. And in mood disorders, patients who suffer from them may have uh, an interference with their ability to function properly. That's definitely one of the hallmark things you're going to see with patients who have mood disorders. And then it's going to be characterized by an abnormal range of moods or internal emotional states and patients having loss of control over them. That's important because a lot of times patients who present with mood uh, disorders will say that no matter what I try, I can't change the way I feel. I'll try to do things I normally enjoy, like let's say playing basketball or going fishing or woodworking, whatever it may be. I try to do things that I normally enjoy, but I can't change this feeling. I can't stop feeling upset or sad or angry, whatever it may be. Those patients have lost control over their emotional states. And the severity of their moods can actually cause a lot of distress, not just for the patient, but also for the patient's uh, loved ones and, you know, immediate emotional support system. A lot of times people think that patients who are suffering from mood disorders are the only ones that are suffering, but that's not the case. Their loved ones may be struggling to support them. They may not know how to cope with the patient's feelings and how to help the patient specifically. So a lot of times that also plays a role in mood disorders, and, and it can lead to an impaired social and occupational function. Patients suffering from mood disorders don't always tell people, right? That's kind of very common. People hide it. People internalize it. They don't, you know, put it out front. So that may mean that their families may think, you know what, there's something wrong with, you know, my family member. He doesn't care. She doesn't care about our family anymore, even though it's not the case. Their employers may think this person's gotten lazy. He's not trying as hard as he used to, et cetera, et cetera, even though that might not be the case. They might just be going through something internal that's really difficult for them to vocalize or to tell. And one important thing to understand is that these patients might also have psychotic features of delusions, hallucinations, and disorganized thought and speech. And that's important because we've talked about this in our videos on psychosis, on schizophrenia, and on uh, the schizophrenic disorders. So let's just write this down, psychosis, right? So they may have psychotic tendencies, and that's simply because of their mood disorder itself. That's very important, and that's something you should definitely keep in mind. So when it comes to the USMLE Step 1, there are several types of mood disorders that you definitely need to know. And they are the major depressive disorder, or as we know, depression. This is a very important one, so I'm putting like three stars next to it just to help you understand you definitely need to know this. Uh, then you have postpartum depression, bipolar disorder, also a very highly tested uh, mood disorder. We also have two that are called, uh, two last ones are called the dysthymic disorder 
and then finally we have the cyclothymic disorder. Now in the upcoming videos, we're going to be discussing each and every one of these in detail, what it entails, and how to treat them. But for now, that's going to cover it for our overview of mood disorders. Go ahead and go on to the next video so you can get more uh, understanding and a better understanding of what happens in these types of mood disorders. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And one last thing, if you guys don't know, you can find our videos now on a podcast format on all of your favorite podcast streaming services. So if you use Apple Podcasts, uh, Spotify, Google, whatever you may use, go ahead and just search Mad Medicine and it'll pop up and you can listen to them while you're running, when you're going to the clinic, while you're driving, while you're sleeping, while you're waking, all the time. And with that being said, go ahead and continue on to the next video. Thank you.